How is magnesium good for your health, particularly if you have type 2 diabetes? You know what? Magnesium isn't just good for your health, it is absolutely vital. Over 600 chemical reactions that take place inside of your body involves magnesium. In fact, without magnesium, you'll die. You're listening and watching the Harun Rabbani podcast. And in this episode, we are going to explore why magnesium very specifically is important for people with type 2 diabetes and how that will help them to step towards reversing the diabetes. Within every single cell of your body, you have energy factories called mitochondria. So those mitochondria convert glucose, sugar, with oxygen into carbon dioxide and water and energy. This is very basic high school level biology. However, people often forget. Now, in that process of creating the energy, so the mitochondria, in that process, it requires magnesium. Without magnesium, that will not take place. You can imagine if you cannot create energy, then very soon you'll have no energy to even survive, let alone thrive. The second thing is in the production of insulin, magnesium is a vital cofactor as well. That means it's one of the minerals involved in the development of insulin. So again, for insulin resistance or over insulin production, which is very common, then magnesium is critical. Magnesium doesn't just work by itself. It works with other elements. And when it comes to the strengthening of your bones, you want to deposit calcium. Without magnesium, the calcium cannot be deposited. And in fact, very often people with calcium excess and magnesium deficiency end up depositing the calcium in the joints, such as the knees or the hips, and hence the development of arthritis. Magnesium is important in your immune health, in your brain health, in the health of your muscles quite clearly. Very importantly, magnesium is critical in your heart health. Whilst in other normal cells, there may be a handful or more of mitochondria, when it comes to heart muscle cells, approximately 5,000 mitochondria per cell. So without the magnesium, of course, you cannot operate your heart. Magnesium is also involved in the transportation of calcium and potassium ions across cell membranes. This is very important for the optimal performance of your nervous system. For example, people with magnesium deficiency will experience leg cramps. Here's the big challenge. 50 to 60% of the magnesium is present in your bones. The rest of them in soft tissues and only 1% in your blood serum. What does that mean? It means when you go to your doctor or the hospital to get a check, whether it be a blood check or anything else, in the blood serum, you will only find maximum 1% of magnesium. So let's say you've got 1% magnesium in your blood that will look like you're okay you don't need more magnesium but it misses that 99 percent of where the rest of the magnesium normally are located so the consequences of magnesium deficiency include heart problems high blood pressure osteoporosis diabetes migraines and headaches insulin production energy production and a weak immune system how do you know you've got magnesium deficiencies here are some of the symptoms they include fatigue and weakness, loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, sleepiness or sleeplessness, hyperexcitability, muscle spasms, pins and needles, shaking, abnormal heart rhythms. Now magnesium should be available in our foods, the natural foods I'm talking about. And so one of the common causes of course is magnesium deficiency in your food. So it may be that you're not eating magnesium rich foods. That's one thing. But the other thing is, of course, you might be eating foods which are normally rich in magnesium, but they're depleted. Why? Because of the mass farming methods which have depleted the soil. So this is a very common problem that you must be aware of. If you've got type 2 diabetes, of course, you're going to have deficiencies. If you've got diseases such as Crohn's disease, there's a direct causal issue of magnesium deficiency. If you've got kidney problems or you're using diuretics in the long term, if you're experiencing long-term vomiting or diarrhea, you're going to be deficient in magnesium. Certain medications also cause magnesium deficiency and alcohol problems as well. So here are some of the common questions my clients ask me about magnesium. First of all, will magnesium help me sleep? Yes. Magnesium is directly involved in your circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm is your clock related to your day-night cycle. 
And you don't just have circadian rhythm for your whole body. Individual cells and organs have their circadian rhythm also. Magnesium itself helps your body to relax. It helps you to calm down, chill out, and it helps you sleep better, as well as sleep longer. How about will magnesium keep me awake? Well, actually, if you are taking too much magnesium, it can cause a laxative effect. It can give you stomach cramping, and that will interfere with your sleep, which isn't what you want because sometimes you also could be taking the wrong type of magnesium, like magnesium oxide, which has very low bioavailability and actually causes more problems than it's worth. Another problem that a lot of diabetics face is something called restless leg syndrome. Literally, the leg cannot rest. And so will magnesium help me with my restless leg syndrome? Yes, it will. People with restless leg syndrome often have a deficiency in magnesium. So helping you to take that will help with your nerves, help with your immune system and help your body to relax more. Some people are confused. They ask if magnesium will help them lose weight. The truth is, no, magnesium is important to sustain a healthy body. But in order to lose weight, there's a lot more than meets the eye. Besides calorie deficit, meaning eating less than the energy you consume, reducing your insulin resistance and so on, on its own, magnesium will not help you reduce weight. Will magnesium help you to reduce your blood pressure? Magnesium has the effect of influencing the release of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide stimulates the relaxation of your blood vessels. And so if your blood vessels are relaxed, that means there's less blood pressure. Will magnesium help reduce my anxiety. A research in 2017 across 18 studies showed that magnesium actually helps people to relax and reduce significantly their levels of anxiety. So which foods are rich in magnesium? They start off with pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, almonds which are dry roasted, boiled spinach, dry roasted cashews, black beans, brown rice, bananas, halibut salmon and mackerel, avocado, chicken breast, ground beef, which is 90% lean, chopped and cooked broccoli, dark chocolate, lentils, buckwheat or quinoa, kale, collard greens, spinach, turnip greens, and mustard greens. So despite all of those amazing foods, one of the things people have an issue with is they're still eating the fast foods and the highly processed foods. You know, the reality is this, that if you buy some food and it has an ingredient list, it is a processed food. And processed foods have so many detrimental ingredients in it, excess of sugar, excess of salts and preservatives, that they negate the nutritional value of the food. So if you're serious about reversing type 2 diabetes, you've just got to stop the processed food completely. Eat more natural. And you might think, well, hold on, how am I going to make the time to cook all this food? Well, cook them in batches or prepare them in batches. So the next best thing is, of course, if you're still not getting enough magnesium, is to take magnesium supplements. There are four supplements I want to bring to your attention, which have been shown to be very useful. I've already mentioned that magnesium oxide has got so little bioavailability, meaning your body's ability to use it, that it's not even worth considering. So make sure you don't get that. However, there are four other supplements that you may wish to consider. These include magnesium L-threonate, magnesium malate, magnesium citrate, and magnesium glycinate. They all have their different benefits. Make sure you do your individual research before you purchase them. And by the way, always check with your doctor. Before you do anything, check with your doctor if you're allowed to take magnesium. Often they'll say yes, but I'd rather you check because certain magnesium supplements may react with medication if you're taking it. So no matter what, always check with your doctor. Finally, I want to talk about the best form of magnesium that I use. First of all is Epsom salt. Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. So you can buy that from most health food stores or pharmacy or chemist. A couple of cups of those in a bath is absolutely amazing. Here's what it does. So you have a nice warm or hot bath, Epsom salts in, soak in the bath for about 20 minutes, no more than 30 minutes. It has the effect of chelation, meaning it helps remove toxicity from your body. That's the one thing I do from time to time. And the other one, which you can still use in your bath as well, is magnesium chloride. 
also called magnesium flakes. Magnesium chloride is brilliant. It's, it's definitely my personal favorite of magnesium supplements. I'm not eating it, so there's no bioavailability issue there. I'm soaking in it. My number one main supplement that I use in terms of magnesium is magnesium oil spray. Now, how do I use it? First thing in the morning, after I've had my shower or bath, what I will do is put some coconut oil on my body or olive oil. This is a very Asian thing and a person with dark skin thing. It's actually brilliant for your skin, by the way, for skin hydration and moisturization rather than um, some fancy toiletry, which probably has toxins in it. So after I put the coconut oil, which is my um, go-to one, I will then spray 20 squirts of the magnesium in different body parts, starting off with the back of my legs, front of my legs, my lower back, my glutes, and if I need to, my shoulders and my arms. 20, that's all you need. But if you're going to do that, build it up. And also, if I find there's a bit of muscle stiffness or soreness in that day, then at night time after I've had my shower or bath or after I've been to the sauna, I will use the magnesium again. And that really has helped me with my sleep. One of the things that I haven't talked about already is my father used to suffer from cramps when he had type 2 diabetes. So I would give him this magnesium spray bottle and he would use it as soon as he got cramp. And within 30 seconds, the cramp has gone and he's in currently now in his 80s and throughout his 70s and 80s he's been using that so again it has many uses here is how you make magnesium oil spray in this example i'm going to make three 100 gram bottles of magnesium oil spray we start off with 300 milliliters of hot water then we measure out 300 milligrams of magnesium bath salts or magnesium chloride flakes. It's the same thing. Once you're ready, pour in the magnesium flakes into your container and start stirring until it has totally dissolved. And when that's ready, start pouring that using a funnel into your individual bottles. Of course, when you take 300 milliliters of water and 300 grams of flakes, you're going to end up with more than three bottles. In fact, I ended up with four and a half bottles of magnesium oil spray. I hope this episode of the Haroon Rabani podcast has been useful for you. If you found it useful, make sure you share, make sure you like me, make sure you save it because you might want to come back to it later. The other thing is you may want to watch it again because we covered a lot of issues relating to magnesium, which may be relevant for you today. If not today, then tomorrow. If not, then maybe a few years from now. So make sure you save it. And the other thing is, of course, make sure you share it because there are people out there who are suffering and they don't need to suffer. And actually, they can try change their life quite dramatically with very little cost. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.